Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. Wow, is it Friday already? Hey, don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining. Say, coming up later in the show, we'll tell you why autonomous cars could cause more urban sprawl. But now let's get to the news. And here's a report that ought to put a smile on everyone's face in the global automotive industry. The latest data from Wards shows that new car sales in February were up in every major geographic region in the world compared to a year ago. Sales in the Asia Pacific region, comprising nearly 3 million units, were up more than 9%. In North America, with 1.4 million vehicles, sales were only up 0.1%. But we know that the winter weather has held them back. Sales in Europe, with 1.3 million units moving off the showroom floors, were up 4.5%. A really good sign after all the troubles that that market has gone through. In South America, sales hit nearly 400,000 units, up a half percentage point. But that's not bad, considering that that Bolivar revolution has essentially shut down Venezuelan car sales. And sales in the rest of the world, which would include places like Africa and the Middle East, topped 380,000 vehicles, but they were up nearly 16%, meaning that is where the fastest growth is taking place. Ford announced this morning that it's investing half a billion dollars to upgrade its engine plant in Lima, Ohio, to build the new 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6 that's going to be offered in the 2015 F-150. The plant currently produces the 3.5 liter and 3.7 liter Duratec V6 engines. But how interesting that Ford's coming out with a smaller displacement EcoBoost engine for that aluminum F-150. I believe Ford's trying to get a 30 mile per gallon highway rating. By the way, if you want to learn more about that new F-150, check out last week's Out of Line This Week. Just click the link in today's show notes. General Motors announced it's going to pull Opel out of China by next January. The head of Opel, Dr. Carl Thomas Neumann, says the decision is long overdue and it would have cost the company hundreds of millions of dollars just to raise the brand awareness in China. Last year, Opel only sold 4,300 cars in China. The German automaker also announced that its Russelsheim plant will build a new Buick model that will be sold in the U.S., we believe they're talking about the Buick Regal. That plant also builds the Opel Insignia, which of course shares the same platform with the Regal. In fact, that plant used to build the Regal until production was shifted to Oshawa, Canada. Last year, only 18,000 Regals were sold in the U.S. That's not a lot of volume for Oshawa, but it would be a nice bump in production for Russellsheim. From GM's ignition cylinder defect to Toyota's software upgrade for the Prius, recalls have been on everyone's mind. But who's done the best job of keeping its name off the safety recall list? According to data compiled by iccars.com, from the last 30 years, Mercedes-Benz has had the lowest recall rate in the U.S., with just 41 cars recalled for every 100 sold. Next on the list is Mazda at only 55 cars recalled per 100, and third place might surprise you a bit. It's General Motors, with 65 recalled per 100 sold. Automakers with the highest recall rates include Hyundai, at 115 recalled for every 100 cars it sold. Next up is Mitsubishi at 109, and then Volkswagen at 106. Now, remember, the recall rate can be higher than the number sold if an automaker recalls a car for more than one defect. Hey, don't blink, otherwise this next story is just going to race right past you. A man's laying claim to the world's fastest radio-controlled car with this one called the RC Bullet, which just completed a run at a shade under 189 miles an hour. Man, is that thing fast. You can just barely hear the thing coming before it flashes across the screen. Coming up next, we're going to tell you how autonomous cars could cause more urban sprawl. 
Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. On AutoLine This Week, which is, of course, our weekly television program, the topic is all about mobility. And in the following clip, Chris Baroni Bird, the Vice President of Strategic Development at Qualcomm, explains what could turn out to be one of the unintended consequences of autonomous technology. Take a look. Most people can't afford to take a long taxi ride because the, the cost of paying the taxi driver is a significant fraction of the trip. But if you have autonomous vehicles that um, are you know, safe and, uh, and reliable enough to people to trust using, you could imagine a lot more trips, a lot more vehicle miles traveled occurring than today, and that may be an unintended consequence here. We, we, we enable electric vehicles, uh, but we may also enable more vehicle miles traveled. Um, you know, we may, um, we may have more people t uh, calling a vehicle to come to them, which whereas today you don't have that choice uh, unless you have valley parking <laughs> and you have to walk to the car. So there's a lot of unintended consequences that may happen as we get towards autonomous shared vehicles. And, and we're painting a, a very positive picture here, uh, but I think it's important to recognize what some of the, the traps might be if we don't think about them up front. Such as? Such as, you know, this extra vehicle miles travel that people today uh, limit how far they want to commute to work. People typically uh, don't want to drive more than an hour each way on average. Whereas if, if they could feel productive or, or could rest in that time, that might be the only time of the day where they really can chill out and have <laughs> fun, so to speak. They may be quite willing to live further out from work because they, they can use that one hour to commute to do fun things. And so it may increase suburban sprawl. Or as work time, actually. They might oh, as well yeah. start to work well, as soon as yeah. they're in the car. You could, it, you could be working in the car, and uh, it may change work life patterns. So it, it just could change a lot of things about how we live. And the suburban sprawl uh, could increase, even though there's a trend to now towards people wanting to live more in the center, uh, because it's where a lot more of the uh, services are provided. So it's un unclear exactly what will happen when we get to autonomous vehicles. Um, so it could be a very positive thing or it could, it could have some uh, side consequences that we're not very happy about. Some of you might recognize Chris Baroni Bird from other shows that we've done in the past. He also worked at Chrysler and at General Motors. Also joining me on that show are Jean-Francois Tremblay from Ernst & Young and Jim Sayer from the University of Michigan Transportation Research Center. Well, that wraps up another week of AutoLine Daily. Thank you for watching and please join us again next week. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.